Praise God. I want to talk to you a little bit, young people. I know you probably think between me and Pastor, and, uh, and thanks for coming, gentlemen. I haven't seen you here before. I don't want to not acknowledge you. I don't know you, and I'm sorry. I'll come and get by and get to know you a little later. It was crazy when I came in. I'm sorry. But thanks for being here. Amen. All righty, let's get rolling. We need Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, please. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. If you'll stand with me as we read the Word of God to get going here. Amen, amen. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But who over, excuse me, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. What I want to kind of talk to you all, you young people about, and everyone that's here, I just felt this was on my heart all week long, especially with our young people. School is starting back up. And uh, that's a tough place for your light to shine. I've been there. It's not easy to be a Christian teenager, especially today. I've told my youth group a million times I would not want to be a teenager in today's era. Give me my lovely 80s and 90s. These kids face more than I ever thought. I thought things were awful. I would not want to be in their shoes, but praise God they know who God is. Let's pray and I'll let you be seated. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you that, God, again, we can come before you, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it doesn't matter. We are here to praise you. Lord, I just pray you will speak through me and speak what you need these people to hear tonight in Jesus' name. For it is not about me. I am here for you. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing with me. The title of my sermon tonight is Do Not Deny, Don't Be Ashamed. Don't deny, don't be ashamed. As I was just saying, young people, I know school has started. I know what it's like to roam those halls as a young man your age. I was there, believe me, it's been a long time ago, but I was there. A few of you here, I've walked through the very school that you go to, you know, and as I was thinking about this, I really wanted to try to drive it home, and I thought about deny, and I know exactly what deny means, but I looked it up anyway, and it gave me three different things to, three different definitions, and it says to say something or excuse me, to say something is not true. Now, how many of us here have ever said Jesus isn't true? Hopefully none of us, but there are those out there that say he isn't true. But when we look at someone and they come to, and to me it's where I tell you all all the time, you're being watched. It's just the way it is. My youth group should be the first ones to know that we're watched. Pastors had several compliments on our youth group at places we've went, and I'm not bragging. I'm just praise God they handle themselves accordingly, and I give God all the praise. Another one it said, to refuse, to accept, admit, or acknowledge something. Now, how many times can we honestly say we've chosen not to acknowledge him for fear of what someone thinks? I know I did it. I've told you all before, you all are my youth group, you know what I mean. I have told you there were times I should have stood up for Christ and I just didn't. I was afraid of what they were going to think. The peer pressure, I let it come to be too much. But here's the thing, where would we be if Jesus let peer pressure get to him? Amen? Think about it. Jesus took his life and he went out and he was healing people and he was touching lives and changing lives and all the things that he did all while there were kings trying to kill him and he still walked on water. But where would he be if he would have saw the blind man and said, well, if I heal him, they might see me. Put yourself in those shoes. You may not be blind, but where would you be in your sin if Christ would have said, well, I can't forgive you right now. Joe Doe over here, he's looking at me and I can't, can't. You see where I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? You guys, Christ is an important part of your life, and if he truly is, your light will shine wherever you go. Down the school hallways, I know it's not easy. I wish I could go with you and walk behind you and help encourage you to let your light shine. But I can't do that. It's up to you. 
All I can do is try to instill in you what God says and what he wants from you. The third one, to refuse to give something to someone, to present someone, or excuse me, to prevent someone from having or receiving something. Y'all face people every day from all walks of life. Y'all have friends. You have classmates. They may not be your friend, but you know they're there. You acknowledge them. You speak to them. You, I mean, I'm not saying any of you pick on them or nothing. You may not be close, but you know them. You speak to them. But what if they do? What, just your light is shining, and Christ is everything to you, and you're not ashamed of it, and you're not afraid of it. They're going to want to know what you have that they don't. But if you ain't letting that light shine and you're too worried about what everyone else around you is going to say or what everyone around you is going to think about it, and you're just, whenever they come to you, what do you have that I don't have? And you're automatically, and I get there's shyness and there's, it's, some people struggle with that. It's hard to speak about it. But when it's Christ, you need to try to say something. Because I feel what it said here is, you know, when it says to prevent someone from having or receiving you don't speak about Christ, how else are they ever going to know about him? Because you may stand in that person's place. You may be the only thing between them and going home and committing suicide. This day and age, you may be the only person that stands between them and an abusive dad, mother, or both. Because believe me, it is out there. I work at a school. You all know this. You all that don't, I work at a school that is filled with kids that have home lives that just it breaks your heart and makes your ears bleed and it affects their life that's why they're there where at the alternative school that they're at and I'm not talking about any of them behind their back or trying to to do that because I'm not supposed to say you know a lot of certain things but my heart aches because they can come to me and some of them do and I ain't ashamed of who Christ is in my life I have got past that since I was a teenager. And I'm not picking on y'all. I'm just saying, it, it will. the more you do it, the better it'll get. My point is, is I can't say certain things. I am hindered by that school being a public school. Because if one moment, one student thinks I'm pushing my beliefs on him, it could hinder that entire system. All it takes is one mad student, one mad parent. But that doesn't stop me from saying, I, all right, I can help you. I can do what I can do. I can word it differently. I know what God's telling me, and He's because I, I I have had them talk to me, and I'm standing there, and God's just going, and I just apparently, so far, God obviously knows what He's doing because nothing's come back on us. But what my point is is, I'm not too afraid to go home and pray for them. I'm not too afraid to bring their name to this altar, and pray about their situation. I'm not afraid because. If I'm not praying for them, I might be denying them or re from receiving what God has for them. Y'all got to let... This, there was a song when I was in Sunday school. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it... And so on. Ladies and gentlemen, that light ain't going to shine if you got denial in the way. That light... It's this little light of mine, but as you grow in Christ, that light becomes a beacon. That light becomes a lighthouse. It becomes a strobe light. It becomes those great big ones that sway back and forth in the night sky. I'm not saying go out and force it down anyone's throat because you're only going to push them away. What I'm saying is, though, is don't be afraid to let your light shine. And it's simply by your actions. My youth has heard me tell this story a thousand times. Your actions in Walmart will speak louder than your words. Because if you're at school or you're at church or you're somewhere and it is all Christ, as long as there's someone to back you up or you're comfortable because no one's looking, but then they see you in public somewhere and you're cussing or you're throwing a fit or the cashier's not got your change right and you lay into her, I can guarantee you that 100% of the time there is someone set of eyes watching every move you make. And they are going to affiliate you back to the church that you come from. So you got to watch what you're doing. Don't deny Christ the right to flow through you. Don't deny your light to shine. Let it start out that little light of mine. And let it start growing bigger in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Another one I wanted to touch on was Matthew chapter 26, verses 33 and 34. Where Peter... 
He denied Christ three times, even said before the cock crows, you will deny me thrice. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. How many times can we say we're not offended of Jesus Christ, then the moment comes and we just kind of cower a little bit. Somebody's going to hear me witness to this person. Somebody's going to hear me lay hands on this person. We can't deny. We can't deny. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, Christ is too important to deny. As I was speaking when I first started, where would we be when we come to this altar for the very first time ourselves? All of us has hit an altar somewhere in our life, I'm assuming. If you haven't, get to one. Praise God. But we get here and we're asked, God, forgive me. I can't. Somebody's looking. We'd still be in our ditch and our filth and our sin and everything. Because, well, we would never have got out to not go back. Like the song said, I can't go back. I won't go back. I don't want to go back. Do I struggle? I've told you all before. Yes, I do. Do I make mistakes? Unfortunately. But what I've come to learn is those mistakes are often a way to teach me if I allow it. So don't be, don't freak out. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I denied him. I'm going to hell. You can, it's tough. You're shy. You're scared. You don't, you know what I'm saying? When you feel, when you feel the conviction and it comes up on you later, just tell God, I'm sorry. I did deny you. I did wrong. I just pray, God, you will give me another opportunity with that person, with that situation, and I will make it right. If it's not to be me because of my mistake, send someone that can. But help me, though, get past denying you and being afraid to tell people about you. Christ is too important to deny. Amen. Let's go ahead and hit Mark 14. Please. Mark 14. I remember what I said. 29 and 30. Mark 14, 29 and 30 is still talking about Peter. Peter denied Christ. Three times, like it said, he was going to deny him thrice. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I not. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say to you, that this day, even in the night, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. We're living in a world, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's offended by everything. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not offended of Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. It is a fine line to walk when you minister to someone. I get that. Because, again, you can push too much and force them away. But when they, come to, when they see your actions and you're not denying him and they see it at school, they see it at Walmart, they see it at the gas station, they see Nick, they see Sarah, they see whoever. When you're walking it here and you're walking it there and you're walking it there, they're eventually going to realize you're the real deal. And if they ain't got Christ, they're going to look at you again, like I said, and they're going to go, I don't know what he or she's got, but I want it. That's your time. Because you may be the only one that stands between suicide, the only one that stands between them going out and getting drunk and driving. You may be the only one that stops them from shooting up that night simply because you refuse to deny Christ. You simply refused to let the devil tell you, well, someone's going to hear, or it ain't working. There was a couple times I could have said some things to kids my age when I was their age, and I just felt like, they ain't going to listen. And I walked away, and God's going, that was a lie. And I'm like, well, too late now. I just had to fix it, though, because God is, gee, I, I love Christ. Ask anybody that knows me, man. I will tell you who Christ is in a heartbeat. One more scripture I had was Luke chapter 22, verses 33 and 34. They may seem a little right along the exact same lines, but I just really wanted you to understand. Peter, you know, denied Christ and, you know, three times. And it said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and into death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. You know, he's trying to tell Jesus here, I will go with you into the prisons and into death, and then he denies him. You know, we can't 
pray and tell Christ, we're going to go out and teach anyone about Christ, or I will speak to someone, or God, lay someone on my heart, and when they lay that person on your heart, you get there and you're afraid. You're denying someone's right to Christ because of your fear. Denial is a strong word. I, I don't like... I mean, it, it, to me, it even... I relate it to physical things. If I got something you need, I won't deny it. You need money and I got it, I won't deny it to you. I don't even... After I've had people... I have had it happen. I've had cash. I've loaned it to somebody. They did not do what they said they were going to do with it. Not my problem. Was it tough to swallow? Yeah. But I had it. I wasn't about to deny them because you're supposed to love thy neighbor as thyself. Give the things that you have. That being said, like I said, they didn't do what they said they was going to do with it. Doesn't matter. I knew what I did it for. I did it for him. I'll still get my blessing. They're the ones that's got to fix their mistake. It's my place to pray for them to realize you don't do that to somebody. So... That being said, I'm trying to follow my notes, but I just feel like God's going, I need you to go this direction. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My point to all this is people are offended on a daily basis. Christians face crucifixion, basically, in my opinion, now more than we ever have. We can't walk, sneeze, or wheeze. What well, there ain't someone in the world afraid they're going to get what we have. They almost act like it's an infectious disease. I don't know about you young people or any of the rest of you in here, but I am tired of people telling me, not personally, but it is out there, but I am sick and tired of people telling me, don't shove your Jesus on me, but I'm supposed to sit here and accept your atheism like it's no big deal. He spoke of it a while ago. You've got free will. I have had some serious, very awesome conversations with an atheist. Never once argued with the man. Didn't have to. He had his beliefs. I had mine. As simple as that. But don't force me to shut my mouth about my Jesus Christ when I got just as much right to talk about him as you do. Don't deny me what is my right. Because I will not deny you what is yours. I may not agree with it, but it's yours. I will pray for you that you will get it right. <laughs> You know, because we live in a world that I said it is filled with, I'm offended, I'm offended, I can't stand this, I hate that, don't tell me this, don't tell me that. Again, I don't want to pick on any of the kids I work with. I do love them all because they are God's children. But they are the worst crowd I have ever in one place <laughs> that are, don't get on to me, so-and-so did it. Don't get on to me, I do no wrong, it's your fault. Because that's all they know. It is all they're taught. I think a lot of it too, though, is they're told at home, you're wrong, I hate you. It is, they have bad home. I hate you, I can't stand you. They are, they're physically abused and verbally abused. And when they get there, and we're just simply trying to correct them. And, a, and we don't yell at them. We're not supposed to. And, and we just don't. We know, we're trained, we're used to it. We just try to talk to them. But, man, they are yelling in our face. They are cussing us out. I have been called literally by a kindergartner, a no-good mother trucker, and he said the other one. And a lot of people are like, how do you deal with that? Well, my youth, my youth pastor heart hurts. It aches on a daily basis. But I don't let it get to me personally. I can't. Because I don't, I don't know the full story of what they're going through. Maybe I do. But here's what I'm, where I'm trying to go with all that. When those kids come to me, and they want me, they, we're allowed to be their mentors, and it's putting their paperwork, we're one to talk to. Just because they call me names, and they're cussing at me in one minute, and I have been called some bad things by some very young kids and adolescents, here's my point about denial. I'm still not going to deny them the right to have me to talk to because I may be the only thing they have. I may not be able to preach to them like I'd like to, but when they ask the principal, can he be my mentor, it is my responsibility at that point to not deny that young man or young lady anything. I don't got time to worry about 30 minutes ago they may have been calling me everything under the sun. What I got to worry about in my heart of hearts is what I say to them when they need to talk. Because i got to return them back to a family that probably can't stand them, doesn't want them getting off the van. 
I drop some of those kids off because I'm on the van routes too, and it just, I, I don't always know the story. I probably don't want to know it, but it scares me to death what they're possibly walking into. It really, because they have got it some bad home lives. Um, Romans 116, sir. Romans 116. Hallelujah. As soon as I can find it here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I am not ashamed. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be ashamed of who Jesus Christ is in your life. Don't be ashamed of what he's done for you. When that person comes to you and says, I don't know what you have, but I want it. I have watched you react to things that most people would have done this, this, and this, but you stayed calm, you stayed graceful, whatever. Don't be ashamed to tell them, it's Jesus Christ that changed me because I wasn't that way before. Because a lot of people are looking for... Christians, I've told you all this at the house and time, they probably feel like, oh my God, he's repeating himself. <laughs> But I tell them all the time, y'all accept Jesus Christ. The world itself has this really cool thing where they decide to go, you're up here. Well, that ain't where you've put yourself. That ain't why you've accepted Christ. But the world just loves to take Sammy or Shayla and say they've accepted Christ. Now they're way up here on this pedestal. Look at them, look at them. What they're waiting for is for you to fall, falter, or the moment they can push you off that pedestal. You didn't ask for it. That's where they put you. Well, where do you stand your ground? Don't deny. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Handle yourself the way you're supposed to wherever you're at. I can't follow you around on a daily basis. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. All I can do is give you the tools. It's up to you once you leave this church, Patoka Pentecostal Church, or whatever church. You, once you leave those doors and you hit the real world, and this ain't just for y'all young people. We face it, too. Regardless of what y'all may think, us adults got problems. They're just bigger <laughs> to a point. <laughs> they are just, there's more yeah, so anyway, we face it too. Because there is one guy at work that I don't feel he handles anything with those kids the way he should. And it irks me, as they say, to no end. As one of our youth group girls that ain't here says, it irks my nerves. Irks my nerves. Book and chapter, Abby, 316. Irks my nerves. Bless her heart. She ain't even here to defend herself. But praise God, it does. It, or, but because he's, he does seem angry at them. He do, and they do make you angry. Don't get me wrong. There are times my mind is going, let's go behind the woodshed real quick. <laughs> Let me show you what my granddad and my papa would have done. <laughs> I guarantee you, you won't be talking to me like that ever again. But you can't do that. You got to love them. You would be, yeah. Oh, Praise God. But I, again, I can't deny them what Christ has done for me. I can't always say that directly. There are a few of them I've picked up on they want to know. Bits and pieces. They'll let you talk to them a little bit like crying. It's not a bit. If they accept it, then you're in the clear from my end of it. And you'd be surprised. This is what blows my mind. There are some of them in there. They know that book just as good as you do. They just don't understand how to live it. That proves another point. Where... Are they going to be if I'm too ashamed and in denial of what he's done for me when they do want to hear it? Or where are they going to get their guidance? They may know it. You can read this and know every word in it and not have a clue. You can take this book and make it say anything you want to to cushion everything you're doing wrong so it feels like it's okay, but that don't make it okay. But where are you going to be if I'm denying you the right to believe how you want, but I'm also denying you the right to change if you want to change, and I'm the one that you're coming to. But I don't know about y'all. This is where I come to this, and I've, I'm just, I love Christ. I have a passion for being y'all's youth pastor. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it. I just said it again. I love what I do. I love where God's placed me. It's been prophesied to me a couple times. There's another step coming up in my life, and I have told a couple people that's told me that, well, God's going to have to come down and basically drag me over there because I'm really loving this youth pastor thing a lot. So it's probably going to be a tug of war just so you guys know. 
But I'm sick of being a, uh, watching people. I was sick of being a coward because I'm going to say that because when I was at y'all's age, I was. There was times I should have been living for Christ and I wasn't. I could tell you some stories that make your ears bleed. Because uh, now have I done some, I've never done drugs. And a lot of people's like, because we get the misconception, sin. This one's bigger than this one, bigger than that one. Naturally, in the eyes, yes. Spiritually, sin is sin. It's all wrong. It's all against God. You just, should, you just shouldn't do it. And I've told my youth a thousand times, and I get a little long-winded, and I'm sorry, but, you know, if I ain't done drugs and you come to me, I need help with drugs, I'm going to tell you straight out, dude, I don't know how to help you. But I guarantee you I do know people that can. I do know people that has changed their life from drugs to living for Christ. So I can't help you, but I will not deny you or be ashamed to tell you my friend Joe over here, my friend Fred over here, they've been there. This is where they come from. This is where they've got, look where God's brought them. You talk to them. I can't help you, but they can. Because I'm not doing them any good. I'm denying them the right to get their life right by just saying, look, dude, I didn't do drugs. I can't help you. Well, they're looking to me to help them. Where am I at? Where are they going to be if I don't? But I, I just got sick of being cowardly because, ladies and gentlemen, especially today, the world is offended by every move someone makes. Christianity being at almost the top, and just my personal opinion, we are ridiculed. Don't tell me about no God. He can't help me. I love my brother. I got one biological sibling. He's nine years younger than I am, and he's probably the reason I have no hair on my head. But I love him. And that boy... Yeah. keeps my spiritual toes on their tip toes because he knows but yet he doesn't want to live it his biggest conception in his thing is he wants to come to me but when I start telling him how to fix it and it comes out of that book he don't want no part of it it ain't just him the world is that way but I'm sick of being a coward I'm sick of being weak or ashamed of who Jesus Christ is in my life you know, I, I feel strongly my light don't shine enough because, you know, I may not have done drugs, but I will be open, and I have told my youth group I will be transparent. My God has brought me out of alcohol, and your definition of alcohol may be alcoholism or an alcoholic. I'm not sure. I just know that when me and my first wife separated, I drank. Didn't care how much or who it was with. But I'm not there no more. Now, did I know when I was doing that it was wrong? You bet you, because I've been in church since I was four years old. But I didn't always live it. But my point, again, is I'm sick of being a coward. It is time to start not forcing it down people's necks, but just physically and verbally letting your light shine. You don't got to walk up to someone and tell them, you need Jesus, and then walk off. That ain't going to do them any good either. You can't walk up to them and tell them you need Jesus and start telling them this and, you know, just reading them this and then they're, 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 going to, they're like. But they're watching what you do. They're watching your actions. Don't be afraid. Jesus Christ was not afraid to die for you on the cross for every single sin that you've ever committed or going to commit. He knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb. You don't think he didn't already know your story before it played out? If he's not ashamed to die for you, don't be ashamed to live for him. If he's not going to deny you forgiveness for your sins, regardless if it's drugs, alcoholism, prostitution, sexual immorality, this world today faces pornography. Pornography in today's world, in my personal opinion, makes alcoholism look like he just eats too much candy and watches his sugar levels. Because it is a raging killer, in my opinion. It's destroyed marriages. It's destroyed lives of not just the person looking at it. Don't be afraid, you ladies and gentlemen, young ladies, young gentlemen. Don't be afraid of who Jesus Christ is. Don't force it on nobody. But simply don't be afraid. Don't be denied or ashamed to just walk in Walmart and be a Christian. You all heard me talk about kids I went to church with in my youth group. They're twins. They, Scott and Sean was their name. They've heard me talk about them still to this moment impact my life on a daily basis and I haven't seen or talked to them don't even know where they're at nowadays just lost contact with them but their their actions for Jesus Christ 
is what is embedded in my heart spiritually. That's what I'm not forgetting. That's what keeps me going now, some of it. Not all of it, but it is a big part of it. Because my point is, is these two, you want to talk about walks for Jesus Christ, daylight to dark, day to day, everywhere they went. I don't think you could find any better example. They weren't perfect. But I can just about stand before you and literally promise you these two were born in the church. They were raised in the church. And I literally, for many years, watched them walk it, talk it, live it, breathe it, sleep it, drink it, take in some more, and never really falter, falter, falter. They loved who Jesus Christ was. They loved what he stood for. And if you wanted to know about him, they would tell you all about him. Not overbearingly. They would tell you who Jesus Christ was, what he can do, where he was at. I've watched these two. They've heard me say it. They had a prayer. They brought it before God. It was answered. I watched them pray one time over to something as simple as a cassette player. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> it went out. It quit. Well, these two, they just... Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. We need a new cassette player. Money is snug right now. Their mom was a single parent. We understand mom ain't got the money, but we leave it in your hands. Something did they just prayed right then and there the moment that stereo quit. The next morning we go to church. It was a Saturday afternoon that happened. Sunday morning we go to church, and a gentleman in the church come up to him with a cassette player in a box, and he says, I was praying last night, and the Holy Ghost told me, you guys need a new cassette player. Well, this one's two months old and I've played it twice so I didn't go get you the new one but I gave I got this you know twice I played it twice in two months you might as well have it here's the box the, the instructions the little manual whatever man you'd have thought they got a boom because you know they was excited they were truly excited because they lived it now get this this is the coolest part of this story to me we come back to church that Wednesday evening, and here he comes again, and he's got another box that looks just like the one he was carrying the other stereo in. Because I see it, and I'm going, hey, apparently twins, two stereos, right? Wasn't exactly the full story. He walks up, and he says, you remember me giving you that radio? Yeah, you know. And he goes, well, God kind of got on to me later that night. <laughs> I was at home after church, and I was in prayer, and the brother says, I... God says, I told you to give them a new one. He said, I told God, well, that was two months old. I've used it twice. God said, I told you to get them a new one. So that evening on the way to church, he went and got the brand new one. So they were being the guys they are in Christ. They felt it right, and they were like, well, here, we'll give you this other one back. We'll drop it off after church. He goes, no, you don't understand. God told me part of my punishment is you get both of them because I should have done what I was told in the first place. But my point to all that is, and with the denial thing, is don't deny Christ your prayers. It may seem big, it may seem small. This was a cassette player about this long and about this big. It broke. They ended up with two <laughs> because they don't deny God. You know, First Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. If we don't give those cares to God, we're denying him our blessing, the chance to bless us. You know, it ain't no, we don't want to deny God necessarily either by turning away to someone that wants to know him because we're afraid or we're ashamed. We can deny God by that very thing. Well, God, this problem was small. I just didn't feel like bothering you with it. God's telling you to cast all cares. All means what it says. All, big, small, little, tall, it doesn't matter. If you don't give them to him, he can't bless you or fix the problem. He can't take care of it. Don't deny God's blessings. By denying him your prayers, your problems, your struggles, because God wants them. God wants them. Amen. One last little bit, and I promise you I'll shut up here soon. <laughs> I want to leave you with this. On the day of judgment, we're all going to stand before God. Whether we're, we, we get old and we pass away, as Brother John spoke on the last time we was here, we ain't, we ain't none of us here guaranteed tomorrow. I pray nothing happens to none of us, but I don't know. Like I told you, it's that same night too. I went to school with two people in my graduating class that are no longer with us. One died that same summer by a drunk driver. 
The second one died two or three years after we graduated, and we don't know what happened. It's just his best friend come down the road, and his car was on top of him in the ditch, and it killed him. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So when we stand before God on Judgment Day, and it's our time, death, rapture, whatever happens, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, young people, any of us, I don't want to stand there and have God look at me and say, you denied me. You knew me, but you didn't tell anyone about me. Or you, I tried to come to you, and you denied me. You didn't let me in. You know, we don't just deny others. We don't just deny God's blessings when we deny or we're ashamed or we're afraid. We deny him our heart and our soul when we don't bring it to him. A part of our salvation, getting salvation, not getting it, I'm trying to say, is denying God. He wants to change your life. He wants to fix your heart and mend your problems. Not overnight. Not what you not ever have anymore. He's not a fairy godmother with a stick with a star on top. It doesn't work that way. He is God. He has got to have you pray. He has got to have you seek it. But he will answer. And if you do not deny him, I guarantee you in Malachi it says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings you'll not find room enough to receive. So don't deny him your financial problems. Don't deny him your struggles with any issues in your life. Don't deny him struggles with, with trust or with... I hate someone. If you've got hatred, get rid of it. If you're angry at someone, don't be angry with them. Get it off your chest. Give it to God. Don't deny him his right to fix your problems and change your life and open those windows and just flood in the blessings of love and forgiveness and salvation and teaching. Because trust me, once them windows are open, you ain't going to be able to contain it. You'll have to start sharing it with others. Amen. Hallelujah. God is very good. I just want to... Just don't be ashamed, don't be afraid, don't deny people God, to, you know, don't deny God, don't deny other people's God right to live for God. If they come to you, don't be afraid. Young people, you're going to walk these halls this year, and you have no clue what some of these people are going through. But I can assure you, just because they haven't made it to the school I work at, they are affected by something. Not all of them, don't get me wrong, not every child's life is a horror story. That's not my point. My point is, though, it may not even be at home. If one person's going down that hallway and someone kicks their books out of their hand, where's the Christ in you that's going to walk over there and help them pick those books up and say, you know what? They may hate you or just pick on you, but God loves you. He won't ever do it. I will be your friend when no one else will be. I don't care if your clothes are ripped, if your shirt's stained. I don't care if you're, you can't, you know, I'll, I'll carry your books the close to my, they won't kick them. I did that once. I got sick of them watching this news short feller for his age, and they kept knocking his books out of his hands. Finally, one day, I picked them up, and I clutched them up like this, and some kid come up to do something. I said, kick it and see what happens, Junior. Didn't mean it to be violent, but he wasn't going to do it no more. I told him, I said, dude, you're going to leave him alone. Made a big difference in that kid's life. I don't say that to brag or that violence is the answer. I just wanted to prove the point, man. Leave him be. He ain't done nothing to you. So what he's short. So what he wears glasses just means he can see better than you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but God is a big part of my life. He always has been. Did I always live it and per se breathe it? No, I didn't. But I'm not ashamed or afraid anymore because I prayed through it. I've asked God, stop me from being afraid. Stop me from being ashamed. Stop me from denying you your right to bless me. Stop me from denying you to others. So if you're here tonight, and I want to open this altar, and I want you to come to God, and I want if you have the opportunity, if you need to, He needs to be in your heart. Seek salvation. Don't deny Him your heart and your life anymore. Let Him begin to change things. If you are struggling with alcohol, drugs, pornography, life, verbal abuse, get up here and give it to God, and quit denying Him His right to bless you and take care of it. You know, if you need to get up here and pray, let's do it and get it with God because he is here. But also, if you have a fear of worshiping him in front of others, if it is a struggle to walk through your school and people are coming at you going, you know what? Someone's watching, but he wants me to witness to him. Witness to him. But if you struggle with that, come up here and give that fear to God. Say, God, take it from me. I don't want to deny you anymore. I don't want to be ashamed of you in front of others anymore. God, I want to be 
the same person, the same Bradley, Zane, Sammy, whatever, Nick, ever, I want to be the same Jason and Denise, the same Mason, the same Brother John that's in this church that is at Walmart, that is at the gas station because I don't know who's watching. I don't know who's hungering, more importantly. It ain't so much about being watched. It's about they're hungry. They are all, this world is filled with people that are in need of something and some of them don't even know what it is. They don't have any idea all it takes as God forgive me Jesus you died for me without shame because let's face it not all of us have walked the same dirty ditch as the rest of us not all of us have walked in the same filth of sin as the next person but we've all walked in sin we've all been in the dirt and in the mud how many of you rednecks went mud and you come out filthier than a stack of black cats my granddad would say well, our sins the same way we were mudding in sin but when we came to this altar or wherever it went we say Jesus Christ take these from me we're cleansed we're as washed as we took a shower I, I, I say that shower and it reminds me I don't want to point anyone out and embarrass them but our young Shayla her dad started coming to our church and as far as I understood he was an atheist correct correct me if, but he didn't he was an atheist he didn't want no, but when they she started coming then mom started coming then dad got curious and on a Monday afternoon she went to our pastor French's door at his house which just lives across the street from the church and she says my dad is at the church I don't know what's going on he just got me and mom in the car and basically what zoom there about 800 mile an hour I'm assuming you know he was pastor even said he was flat getting with it she didn't know what was going on any more than her mom did and pastor said he looked out the door and you got to understand brother stands about yay high and weighs about 100 pounds more than me and he was under the awning the pastor said I was going God help me in Jesus name I don't know what's up Robert you know what is it pastor said I got over there didn't even more get the church door open. I unlocked it and pulled the door open, and he about knocked me down, and he sprinted down the aisle, and he hit the altar. God, forgive me. God, forgive me for myself over and over. And pastor said, God finally told me I need to go up there and tell him he's forgiven. So he said, I went up, and I laid my hand on him. I said, Brother Robert, you're forgiven. It's that easy? Pastor said, yeah, God forgave you the first time you asked. You didn't need the other 60-some times. <laughs> He says, I want baptized right now. My point to all that is this. I want baptized right now. Pastor baptized him, and he come up out of the water, and I guess Brother Robert said, I have took a million showers in my life. He's a mechanic. He goes, I come home filthy, greasy, sticky, sweaty, you name it. But I feel cleaner now than I have in my entire life. That's, you know, all because Shayla let her light shine. All because Shayla went home and didn't deny the Christ that was in her heart. Mom started coming, dad started coming, and dad quit being an atheist on a Monday night before prayer meeting. It didn't have to be Sunday. I love y'all. I hope I wasn't long-winded or bored you. I hope it came together. I just I have such a passion for who Christ is in my life. And I know with young people, schools here. It's a big time. It's a big place where others are seeing you and your actions and your words and how you react to a teacher. You know, if a teacher just, there are sadly those that they just hone you out. You ain't got the right last name or the right amount of money. But how you handle that teacher out of a class full of 30 people, it only takes one to see you handle it with Christianity and, and just something, just some sort of grace and mercy. And they're going to know right then, I don't know what I, you know, you may not even know what they're facing. And it may not even be the same thing, but they're going to see your action. And you're going to walk up and they're going to say, how do you handle that so well? And you're going to be able to say, I let Jesus Christ come in and change everything about me. Just remind them, no, it wasn't easy. No, I didn't get this overnight and boom, everything was perfect and excited. Remind them, I faltered, I screwed up, I stumbled, I stubbed my spiritual toe 80 times, 90 times a day the first two or three weeks. Don't be afraid to be a little bit transparent with them. 
don't give them the impression I got saved and I was perfect. But let them know Christ had to do a work in me, how that work went and what it did, how he blessed you simply because you didn't you quit denying the feeling because you may be the only one that stands between someone and death, suicide, verbal abuse because they may find out they can come to you and if they're being physically abused or sexually abused, they may need your help going to the counselor. They may need your help going to the pastor at their church knowing this stuff's going on but don't have nobody else. Young people, y'all have enough weight laying on your shoulders. I understand that and I respect that. But let Christ live through you. Let your light shine. Don't deny. Don't deny. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't shove it down no one's neck or their throat, but let them know Christ is what changed me. I am who I am because of him. I am 40 years old, and just because I'm a youth pastor and I preach here tonight, and you've heard me, some of you have heard me preach sermons at our, little, our church, I don't have it all together all the time. Young people, everybody, I, there are times I'm at home weeping. I'm at home not even, I'm not angry at someone, I'm not angry at God, but there's anger, there's some, I'm just, I'm struggling. It's been a crappy day, a crappy week. And there are times I'm just in my bedroom, just, God, I'm angry. I don't even know why, but it is here. But before I give it out, before it starts getting out, I want it done. Because I don't want to deny someone the chance to live for Christ or change their life because I was too angry and wrapped up in my selfishness to let them know they can come to me. Because they ain't going to come to you if they see you angry and bitter and full of hatred. And then see you try to say you're a Christian also. Believe me, the world may seem crazy right now especially. But they know the difference. They hold you on that pedestal and they're just waiting for you to knock yourself off. They're waiting to push you off. Don't let them. Don't give them a reason. And if they do, and you know you've done nothing wrong, you know God's doing it, and you know you are in the correct, you, and it, or if you do stumble and you own up to it and you take care of it, they may never put you back up there. That's fine. They may put you back up there and will push you off again. But don't get discouraged is my point. You're not putting yourself up there. They are. You let them worry about whether they're, they're ever going to get their life right or not. When they knock you down or you fall off of it, get yourself back up get strong and pray for them to quit putting you up there because they need to come down and realize I'm not up here you know what I mean so just hang in there y'all if any of you want to pray some more I'll pray with you I'm going to give this I guess back to you or I'll keep going praise God hallelujah why don't we stand when we all come to the front tonight Everybody file into the front. Step out. This, you know, God wants to do something here tonight. You know, God gave us a word tonight. You know, don't deny and don't be ashamed. We don't know who we can touch and who we can minister to just by telling them what God has done for us. The Bible says we're overcome by the word of our testimony. Sometimes the most powerful thing that we can do is to tell our friends, tell our neighbors of what God has done for you. But we can't do that if we're ashamed of Him. And tonight, while we're gathered around the front, I just want us to pray tonight. And I just want us to pray that that God would release a spirit of boldness in us. That we would not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that we will take what God has done for us to our friends, to our families, our lost loved ones, our neighbors. Because we, we, we live in a world that is so messed up, that is dying and hurting. is just looking and reaching for something real. And I'm here to tell you we have something real in this place. If we would just get a hold of it tonight. So let's pray, Lord. I pray, Lord, tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, touch me. Touch my life, Lord. Help me, Lord God, 
to be more like you, Lord God. Let, help me, Lord God, to have boldness to step out, Lord, when you speak to me, Lord God. Lord, help me, Lord God, tonight, Lord, that, Lord, whenever you speak to me to, to talk to my loved ones, to talk to my neighbors, to talk to my friends, Lord, that I will take that step of faith today. I will take that step of faith, Lord, that, Lord, you're going to give me the strength and the courage to overcome those situations and circumstances, Lord. And I'm going to believe that you're going to be in it, Lord God. Lord, you say your word will not return back more. So Lord, my tonight, my I'm going to make a stance and a promise to you. See, I'm ready to Lord, be I'm gonna stand. all you so want me to be. And I will not be ashamed of this God. I'll give up wrong to make to it right. No, I am not ashamed, ashamed yeah. of the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. And no, I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I am not. To be counted, and I'm willing to give my life. See, I'm ready to be all He wants me to be. I'll give up wrong to make it right. I am not ashamed of the gospel, no, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, no, I am not ashamed. The gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am not ashamed to be counted, but I'm willing to give my Oh. 